Hello, and thank you for being here, and welcome to West Musings, 10-minute museum talks, presented to you with thanks to Wells Fargo, Hawkins, Delafield, and Wood, and this evening's presentation here at the Computer History Museum with thanks to box.org. Recording this evening is provided in assistance with and post-production with thanks to Soulstream Studios. This evening, we're gonna be hearing from Laura Fry. Laura Fry is one of the finest young curatorial voices in this country with a resoundingly successful opening recently of the Haub Collection of American Art at the Tacoma Art Museum. We know that she will continue to keep doing big things, whether it's in Tacoma or the career that she had at the Buffalo Bill Cody. With no further ado, it is my pure delight to welcome Laura Fry to the stage. Hello. Um, from my childhood onward, I've always found adventure and exhilaration in snow skiing. However, I grew up in Cincinnati, Ohio, where there's not much in the way of mountains. But no matter, the closest ski hill was located nearby in southern Indiana. This is Indiana skiing in the 1980s. That's me in the middle, wearing gigantic red goggles. Uh, it wasn't exactly the Rocky Mountains, as you can see, uh, but we had a blast all the same. And before long, the excitement I found on the ski hill was something I wanted to share with others, and I became a ski instructor when I was in high school. And by the time I started working in museums, I'd already been ski instructing for about a decade. And initially, Seeking thrills in the great outdoors on a ski hill may seem totally unrelated to a quiet, contemplative, indoor museum experience. But there's a remarkable degree of similarity. And others have recognized this as well. Uh, 20 years ago, museum exhibit developer Judy Rand uh, was inspired to draft a Museum Visitor's Bill of Rights after a whitewater rafting trip. And on her trip, she discovered that it was extraordinarily important to meet her basic needs for physical comfort and belonging before she could appreciate the sights around her. And as it turns out, there are many lessons that adventure sports can teach us, or perhaps remind us, when it comes to our own museum visitors. And it all begins with that first visit. So picture this. You are about to try skiing for the first time. You're bundled in so many layers of technical sounding material that you start to resemble an astronaut. Your hands are in gloves so thick that you can barely zip up your jacket. Added to that, you're wearing stiff, heavy plastic boots that are almost impossible to walk in, especially on a snow-covered surface. Now grab two skis, a couple of poles, and don't drop anything. Go lumbering across the snow to meet your instructor. The mountain looms over you, filled with graceful, happy people who already understand exactly what's going on. And they just underscore your extreme feeling of awkwardness. It can be tough to remember when we work in museums every day. But keep in mind, many first-time museum visitors can feel every bit as uncomfortable and out of place as this. But if you're skiing, you'll then be asked to attach a long, slippery board to each foot at the top of an icy mountain. I mean, are you kidding me? As a ski instructor, much of my work day in and day out was making sure that my audience wasn't paralyzed with fear. With skiing, uh, if my first-time student felt cold or embarrassed or terrified, it was going to be almost impossible to teach them anything. However, if you took steps to ensure your student was physically comfortable, felt a sense of welcome, and if you introduced new skills gradually by moving at the student's pace, then you'd give that new skier the confidence to tackle a bigger hill, something that might have looked completely impossible only an hour before. When I first started leading museum tours, it all felt so familiar. Because if I didn't take steps to welcome my audience, 
to give them a connection to the exhibition to include them. Then you know, their eyes would glaze over, they'd start fidgeting, and, and suddenly I wasn't reaching them. There wouldn't be this, this engagement or this learning. And beyond museum tours, there's so many ways, so many simple ways, to make our visitors feel welcomed and included in our institutions. A warm smile from frontline staff, clear sign for the bathroom, uh, reducing academic gibberish in our exhibition text, um, providing multilingual interpretation. For that matter, providing multicultural interpretation. There are so many ways, big and small, to foster a sense of respect and care for our visitors. And once our visitors are welcomed, after their basic needs are met, when they feel a sense of inclusion, that's when the real excitement begins. That's when you can take it to the next level. And with skiing, once my students felt uh, comfortable at a certain level, then I'd encourage them to embrace risk, to push beyond that comfort zone. Uh, in skiing, to rise to that next level means facing your fear, defying danger, and even leaning out into a stomach-churning incline. We don't usually associate museums with this sense of physical risk. But that all changes once you introduce a rattlesnake. In the summer of 2012, at the Buffalo Bill Center of the West in Cody, Wyoming, the assistant curator of natural history conducted museum education programs with a live rattlesnake. And there were no physical barriers between the curator, the snake, and the audience. He just asked that people sit back about 10 feet, you know, well beyond immediate striking distance. <laughs> and as I watched the people in this audience, their discomfort was palpable. You could just feel it. But as they listened to this presentation, their expressions of fear and disgust gradually turned to fascination. And by the time this program concluded, everybody in that audience had gained an appreciation for the important role that rattlesnakes play in the Rocky Mountain ecosystem. And so by embracing this sense of danger, this presentation challenged and changed perceptions of one of the most feared animals in the United States. And beyond physical risk, in museums we also embrace risk when we present emotionally charged content, difficult truths, and uncomfortable imagery. In early October, Tacoma Art Museum in Washington State opened Art AIDS America, an exhibition that reveals how the AIDS crisis forever changed American art. This artwork directly confronts the viewer with the full scope and tragedy of the AIDS epidemic. A quarter of the artists on view died of AIDS-related causes themselves. These works express outrage, anguish, and disgust. But the end goal is not merely to shock or dismay. It's almost impossible to come through this exhibition without feeling a profound sense of empathy. And by pushing visitors beyond their comfort zone, this exhibition seeks to counter the stigma that still exists around this disease, even in 2015. By making our visitors uncomfortable, by encouraging them to embrace risk, museums can shatter misconceptions and encourage new discoveries. And this is something I first learned as a ski instructor. I mean, if you want to expand your horizons, if you want to grow, you can't always play it safe. When we embrace risk and encourage our visitors to metaphorically tackle that higher mountain, we become relevant, vital, and even life-changing. And in the end, remember that attempting a dangerous adventure sport for the first time can be just as intimidating as a first-time visit to a museum. And when we welcome and include all of our visitors, no matter where they come from, then we open our audience to new experiences. Then, by pushing boundaries, by embracing risk, we encourage our audience to face challenges, to make new connections, and even expand their worldview. And ultimately, 
The most important lesson I learned from ski instructing was really simple. Remember to have fun out there. I mean, if you're not having fun, you're probably not learning very much either. We know this from this conference. It's been a great couple of days. It's a blast to meet new people, to learn more about our field, uh, and to build our community. We love what we do. So carry the sense of fun back to your own museums and institutions. Thank you.